these are the pain points I think that you know we really want to raise awareness with and bring to the surface hopefully help others what you do feel like you've been here forever very quickly you live in a place where people are like I'd like to have the company meeting there I have to like <laughs> my team always wants to come down here as well About two months ago, we did a moving to Miami survey on Twitter, and we found out of the people who recently moved, 73% preferred to use a professional moving service um, in the form of a full service move or a pod type relocation. We're going to drop the full results of the survey into the chat so you can check more of that out. And the thing is, you know, the, the feedback was so powerful and, and Shift was really positioned to help. Um, so let's face it, like we know that moving sucks. On average, it takes 60 hours to source a reliable moving company, plus all the bombardment of text messages and phone calls that you're going to get from entering your info into a moving lead gen site. Um, so the magic of Shift is that we've turned those 60 hours plus into a 30 minute video chat with a personalized move assistant who's available 24 seven. You can find out more on shiftmoving.com. Um, we actually have a promo code today for everyone who's attending and your friends and family um, for Miami Tech. You'll get $200 off of your move. Um, we do free estimates, so definitely feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to help. Um, but we know that you know stress-free moving it doesn't end with your belongings, making it safely and securely destination. There's so much more to that. So the speakers on the panel today will touch on the pain points faced to those moving and more importantly, how the city and the stakeholders are helping to solve those challenges. So welcome to Miami, let's get started. Um, first, let me introduce the panel. So we have Nicole Vasquez, she's a co-founder and chief people officer at DeskPass. It's a really cool real estate technology company providing hybrid work solutions for companies and uh, they're doing remote and distributed teams. So welcome, Nicole. Um, joining her on the panel is Jenny Garcia of Florida Realty of Miami, one of the very first people that we met here. Thanks so much for joining, Jenny. Um, make sure you unmute. Um, and, and lastly, Kat Wilson, a recent Miami convert, is also on the panel with us today, and she's the managing director of Miami Angels, uh, Florida's largest angel investor collective, which brings together entrepreneurs and accredited investors to fuel success. So um, before we dive in, just a couple of housekeeping things to get out of the way. Our hashtag for the event is moving to Miami. Um, please feel free to connect with us at Shift Moving or join Upstream on Twitter. And of course, the discussion is going to be made available on Upstream, so you'll be able to share as well. Uh, feel free to drop your questions at any time into the chat. We will definitely get to those. And then lastly, we will have um, breakaway sessions for some one-on-one -on -one interactions after the discussion. Make sure you don't leave after you have those discussions because we have a special gift for you at the very end. All right, cool. Um, so let's get started. So there's always that that moment that sells Miami, right? Um, Kat, I remember when I met you, the Miami Tech happy hour back in September, maybe I was trying to sell you a little bit, but you had not made the move just yet. So what was that magic moment for you when you knew this was uh, the place to be? A uh, great question. So I came down for a week in September, um, hung out a lot with a good friend who had made the move from Chicago maybe nine months or so earlier. And I think some of it was being able to find my neighborhood. So walked around Brickell and was like, okay, this feels city enough where everything really is walkable. You don't need to drive every day. Um, eventually I found some apartment auctions. Things were really crazy, especially, you know, in winter, which is the season down here. Um, but I think it was being able to envision myself in that particular neighborhood and then just understanding, you know, having a good friend who came down here and so much happened for him so quickly uh, was a big part of it as well. Awesome. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Definitely helps to, um, to have those connections for sure. Um, Nicole, what about you? I know it's been a couple of years in from Chicago, right? What was it for you? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I'll admit I have been coming out of Miami since I was, I'll say 21, but probably a few years before that for all the reasons that people come down to Miami to, to live, live their best life. Uh, and I would be going to South Beach and, you know, going to the clubs and the restaurants and Miami was fabulous. And then I'd go home and 
then I would never think of Miami as a place to live. And then it was only like eight, nine years ago that a friend of mine moved into Brickell and I visited her and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. What, what are these other neighborhoods outside of this area, this little bubble that I would go to when I was younger going to certain places. So that really opened my eyes. Um, I fell in love with Brickell. I fell in love with yeah, it's the mainland area of, of all the neighborhoods from the design district down to Coral Gables. And I that is one, as Kat said, I envisioned myself here. So once I saw that, I said, okay, it's livable. So that was one side of, um, of the reason of moving here is, is really seeing the neighborhoods and knowing that Miami is everything but uh, what people come down here for, for South Beach. Um, and then the other side is that I'm from Chicago and it took me uh, a little too long in my life to realize that I am not a cold weather person. I'm a very warm weather person. I'm a water sports person. I'm a sun and fun and active uh, all the time person. So once I saw that the quality of life here was just so significantly better um, from my quality of life in Chicago, which was that four to six months out of every year, I felt very restricted. I couldn't be out and active as much as I wanted to and I couldn't do the type of activity. So pairing those two together, it was an easy decision, but we ended up uh, snowboarding. My husband and I starting four years ago would come down and rent a place for six, a fully furnished place for six months and then go home to our place. And then we did that for about two years. And then we were like, all right, we've tested it out. Like we want to move, let's let's rip the band-aid off. So, so we had a very strategic move. It was kind of like working backwards from what was not working in our life, which was cold weather, to what's a place that we really like and enjoy and feel our best. And then we moved here. So a lot of different decisions led up to it. That's great. Thanks so much for sharing. Yeah, I can definitely relate. Um, I feel like 10 years ago, you know, the long weekends, like, yeah, come to Miami, <laughs> great. Uh, but now the infusion of business and quality of life um, just expands your, your lifestyle even more. So, yeah. And I think everyone on this call can attest that my favorite part is when people come to visit, they're like, I haven't been in Miami in so long. I'm like, Oh, I'm going to show you everything you didn't realize, you know, and it's, and, and every, I mean, I have friends that come down for a weekend and they're like, Oh yeah, I, I totally get it. Like, I'm, I'm so glad that you showed me everything else. So there's so much more to, to learn and explore here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jenny, do you want to, you want to add anything? Um, just make sure you unmute. There you go. Cool. Yes. yes. Of course. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank you for inviting me, having me in this discussion. And welcome to everyone here that has moved to Miami. It's been my home for over 20 years now. I moved from South America, from, Colom from Colombia. So I've been a Brickell resident for 20 years. And I get it and I understand. I have seen the Brickell transformation too. And it's great. So welcome all here. And I understand what you're saying. Miami is a melting pot. We have so many, so many things to do here. Plus, a lot of opportunities here for for work. And we are welcoming now the tech community that is moving to Miami. And I'm here to help and answer your questions regarding regarding your um your your real estate or your your new home questions because it's a lot it's a lot to say. But as you said, you both say Kat and Nicole. There isn't a stretch. Let's say from Coral Gables all the way to all the way to Midtown, Wynwood, Edgewater, that can really become a cluster because those are um, areas where you can yeah walk everywhere and, and that definitely adds up to the experience of Miami. Absolutely. Okay, that's great. Um, what I'd like to to segue over into is asking. You know, of course, um, hindsight's twenty twenty. So we go through these experiences and they're like, ugh, if I just did this or if I just did that. Um, so if you could do it all over again, what would you change about your move? And Kat, we can start with you since you most recently moved. Uh, so the company that I selected, maybe I should have done 60 hours in vetting people because I just picked the first one. It was a disaster. Uh, so that is one thing I would definitely do differently. You know, they gave me a certain date and things showed up about three and a half weeks later. So thankfully I had already ordered a new mattress. So, uh, and somehow made a livable for those few weeks. So that would be a big part of it. I did move into a place sight unseen, which I don't know that I would necessarily redo it because the market ended up getting a little bit worse, but there were just some frustrating things like I was supposed to face west and have a view and instead I face south into other buildings 
Um, and so I think that was more about the building being a little bit shady, but I would have, because I'm actually still trying to get out of that unit, which like four months in is not something you want to be dealing with. So I would say different moving company. And while I did put a lot of research into the different buildings and all of that, I might've had my friend like go check out the unit in person or do something along those lines. Yeah, those virtual decisions can can get you sometimes. But I mean, so many people, right, if it was renting or buying, just making purchases that way. Um, and then sometimes there's those surprises when you're when you're in real life. So thanks for sharing your story. I appreciate it. I'll go then. Um, actually, that brings up a good point, Kat. So I'll start from with the moving and uh, Daniela, this is, I, I love to plug shift and I'll be honest there, like the, the moving was probably the worst thing um, about it, the moving company. Um, moving from Chicago to Miami, um, it was the first time I actually moved across the country uh, in that regard. And so, you know, they quote you, they come to your house and they give you a quote and they're like, oh, you know, 5,000 pounds or 6,000 pounds should be plenty for a three bedroom, three bath. Like, you know, and we're like, oh, okay, you know, you're the experts, you know, sure enough, we show up and they're like, oh, you're a thousand pounds over, which is going to cost, you know, a few thousand dollars more. We're like, oh. like the process, there was no oversight. So it was just not trustworthy. Um, you know, the service wasn't great. Um, and we went with what we thought at the time was like the company that had the best of the mixed reviews because no moving company really had great reviews anyways. So what you're doing um, and revolutionizing the experience and making more customer focused is, is much needed because I think everybody can attest that moving is just a horrible, horrible experience. And it's like going to the dentist and not getting um, pain medicine or something, right? Like it's, it's just really bad. So good luck with that and definitely <laughs> find a trusted provider. Um, that would be the one point. And then really the only other point is it's hard to find good professional service coming from the Midwest, um, from Chicago, you know, I think it's one of those not big it so you make it cities. It's one of those, like you do well, if you do good work and here our joke is like, everyone's a realtor. So Jenny, I know that you are a very successful, knowledgeable realtor and we appreciate that. However, in Miami, everyone's a realtor and nobody, uh, that we had experience with was very knowledgeable. Luckily my husband is a real estate, um, not in terms of just researching everything, knows everything, you know, he knew, he knew more than the realtor that we worked with and we were proactive about reaching out. Unfortunately, the, the agent only got us a few appointments when we were supposed to have more. And because of my husband, we actually just went and reached out to them ourselves. So my suggestion is if you're working with a realtor and you have red flags that they're not responding, they're not knowledgeable, like ditch them, run, run the other way and find someone reputable and knowledgeable very quickly because you don't want to be limited and be you know, my husband knew more about what buildings were going up and what was available than the realtor and they pretended that they did so just be wary of people who put up a front um and that was really the only of the, the two negative components everything else has been fantastic my other advice is to learn the different neighborhoods because we were snowboarding for two years we'd come down and go to all different neighborhoods and we really got a feel for which ones were more our style which ones were more walkable which ones were closer to you know, the access like to the beach and things that we wanted so my suggestion would be to come down um if you can in advance or talk with friends but each neighborhood is different just like every city uh you know in the u.s they have different look and feel so find the one that, that pairs well with you especially with your stage of life if you have kids or something or if you're wanting to stay out so four in the morning like there's a place for you so find that you know be in a good so many options out there. Yeah, Jenny, we'd love to hear your yes. advice on finding the right real estate agent. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I understand and I feel so very sorry for people that have had that experience just coming into Miami because that will make, you know, that will be a shock when you're, you're looking for, you know, a new life and you're thinking that, wow, I'm going to gonna make it to Miami. I'm going to be close to the ocean because most of people that are coming, they want to be close to the ocean. You want to be close to the beaches. You want to enjoy boarding and all that. So yes, um, is my advice is yes, you have to find a, a, a reliable person, and yes, it's good to go for referred with the author that have been referred by a friend or family. That that is great, and that's how I work. I mainly work with referrals, and and yeah. Social media helps too, 
but refer us out the best because you know who are who's the people that you are dealing with because you have to go the extra mile especially for a person that doesn't need to you. you want to try to help them because they don't know anything sometimes they do not speak spanish and then the help here maybe speak spanish and then you have to go and and, and try to navigate with them until until they excel and and it won't take long until they start finding their way but yes it is important that experience makes a big difference and what i recommend is yes if you are coming to miami you need to start working here in two months yes make a couple of trips um i can be available in a weekend and any you know weekday and i can show you around and in the opinion of your needs everyone is different your criteria if you have children you want to be close in a neighborhood with you know good schools um that's the case for you know clients that i have from connecticut they were want to be based in nearby coconut grove because they like this the schools in coconut grove then i have another client that they want to be in winwood because that's their criteria because they want to work from home but they like the winwood neighborhood and the vibe you know and some other people you know and many people like brickle yes because it's the epicenter is we call it uh um wall street south now it's called like that <laughs> Wall Street South, and it is what it's becoming. It's a beautiful neighborhood. You can walk anywhere. You find anything. I think this pass is is, is a good um, it's a good alternative to you know share spaces for people. So it's, it's another world we come into Miami, and definitely you can make a choice uh, all the way down to from Coral Gables, so you don't want to be so far away from from the epicenter that is Brickell downtown area. And if you want to, you want a house. You can go to Port Gables, to Coconut Grove, and if you want to live in a, the roads, which just west of Brickell, if you are familiar with the roads, and, and then you go to the condominiums uh, market, which is more, of course, you have more, more inventory. And some of the neighborhoods here, like let's say Edgewater, uh, Midtown, Overtown, even Little Havana, are going to a gentrification which uh you can grow with those neighborhoods or you say i don't want to grow with the neighborhood i just want to be in the one that is already grown and it's very cold and i want to be there or grow, grow, grow. so you can make that choice and and that way you can start feeling and you will be able to move when you're ready to when you're ready to and when you get to know that the city well enough Fantastic advice. Thanks so much, Jenny. Yeah, I know we spent, um, I think it was two days out here when we were looking for a commercial spot for our office and we saw like 15 places in maybe a day and a half. And then at the end, we're like, okay, we're going to make a decision. And it ended up being in, in Brickell in a pretty unique spot, but we did a remote closing and um, a large item was missed on the inspection. And it's just like, these are the pain points I think that, you know, we really want to raise awareness with and bring to the surface, hopefully help others. Um, but yeah, you, there's so many, so many details to, to yes. view. Sure. And the transaction itself isn't, isn't a complicated transaction. It's just something that you don't know how it works because you're coming to a different state. It's not complicated. It's, it's just a fact of finding someone, someone that is trustworthy that you know is going to walk through the process with you and it's going to look for your interest. And it's important that when people come to Miami, they think, oh, I have to have a real estate agent. I don't have to pay the real estate agent. No, don't worry about it. When you are buying a property in Miami, that part is all on the seller's side. Seller is the one that pays for all the professional fees. The seller listing agent, listing broker is the one that pays for that. So the buyer can feel free to come look at the properties because he, don't, he doesn't have to pay anything to the, to the yeah. real estate agent. The agent is there to assist you to walk you through the process. You and what you said, Daniela, sure inspection is very important. People, Crazy. it's important that people get people that is in the audience that doesn't live in Miami and are coming What's here. They wanted to buy a property in Miami. You know that they can make an offer. They can sign a contract and get an executed contract. But they have ten days to have an inspection, and then they can back out if there's something you know, in the property that you are, that is a surprise or something that is happening on the property and the owner doesn't want to right, fix it or give you a discount. You are free to walk out and your deposits will be after 
So there's so many, so many things that, that you you have to feel protect. You have to feel that you are protected. Like right? you're not just walking into a business that and just put in a deposit and your money is gonna is gonna go. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the consumer protection on both the housing aspect and the moving um, needs needs to be there. So uh, none of us should be taken advantage of in any of these large transactions. And um, you know, I really think it's it's finding the right the right partner and the right agent to, to work with. So awesome! Thanks for sharing that. Sure. Um, let's move into a little bit more around. You know, so many startups are entering the Miami market, um, and how this kind of innovation cluster. Um, can can benefit more players or new players, I should say. So, Nicole, you know your perspective of of working together and, and knowledge transferred in shared spaces. Can you tell us a little bit about what the effects of that have been? So, something interesting as well that I've noticed about the Miami tech scene is it's still very I don't want to say young because I don't want to do an injustice to companies that have been here for a very long time, but it's very accessible. So, by that I'm saying like, you know, ten years ago in Chicago when I was first out there kind of networking, building my network, doing that, like Chicago only had maybe one or two, like a few events here and there. And now, you know, there was events multiple times a day. And that I, I, wa I watched that market change so quickly and, and watched very successful founders start going to only certain events and people first coming in don't have access to them anymore. And I witnessed that shift over the years. And in Miami, things are still very accessible where you can go to some of these tech events and you can still have access to some of Miami's best and brightest and most successful and, and chat with them and run rub elbows or talk with the VCs. And it, it's still very accessible and inclusive, which I think is a great time to be here. You can still make good connection with some of these events. Of course, they're growing very quickly. And I think that that ecosystem is, is maturing very fast, but it's still very accessible. So that, that would be the word that I would say. So in that regard, um, you know, for all the companies that are moving down, it's really easy to get connected into if you put the effort um, to make friends at the networking event versus just socializing, um, which they can be easy to just do. Um, in regards to obviously the co-working spaces and the knowledge transfer, so there's many, many different co-working spaces in all the different neighborhoods. And we work out of building.co, which is my first and co-working space in Brickle, but also a tech building co space. So all the companies that work out of here, we know that they're in tech in some regard. So you have a built-in community, built-in way to meet people. Um, but yeah, I mean, that for me, co-working spaces have always been one of the best places to meet other professionals in a approachable environment. Um, and so when you move here, definitely get connected into your local co-working space. It's just an easy no-brainer to to meet other people quickly. And they always have, they typically have events and benefits. And also it's nice to just walk to a place in your neighborhood that's not your home um, and get out of the house. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, there's so many amazing network effects like between the co-working spaces and the events and you're seeing similar people. And I just feel like the collisions of, of networking happen faster here. It's just like rapid fire. Yeah. So um, yeah, I can totally relate to that. Kat, can you tell us from an investment and innovation perspective what you're seeing? Yeah, so I mean, a lot of the same themes for sure. Um, I'm actually in the same co-working space as Nicole. And so that was, you know, I joked that like building co saved me when I first moved down here because I didn't have any of my stuff in my place, it's just like step out with white walls. And so being able to come here and, you know, I had one friend here um, but then ended up sitting right next to Nicole and her husband, and then we had friends with another founder who, you know, we've gone out 20 times at this point. Um, and so just to your earlier point, you do feel like you've been here forever very quickly. And I think that adds a lot to the easy innovation and the easy connections, um, being able to find other people who are really growing their company or closing their company and putting them together to say, hey, I know you're looking for this role and I just met someone with XYZ expertise um, and they, you know, read up unexpectedly or they're going to be a free agent in a month or so has been a powerful part of it. And then in terms of the investment side of things, it's definitely a bit of a flywheel um, with other investors in Miami saying, you know, hey, we're going to leave this, uh, but we still need to fill out the round. We worked with you all previously. We know that you can close things very quickly. You're founder friendly. So just being in the ecosystem is very powerful and 
you end up getting a lot more inbound and things happen naturally versus needing to go out and specifically look for it. Absolutely, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Jenny, I'm curious from, you know, like a, a residential uh, commercial standpoint, do you see these clusters happening of, of startups coming in and kind of congregating into certain places? What's, what's your take on that? My take on that is I see recall like a cluster is, is what I what I see when I when I'm around, when I have clients, when I talk to people, I see a lot of people from, from the tech companies in Miami. I see them most mostly mostly in this area of Rico. Definitely. Yes. I think all of them are, are coming to, to what is sold in the world now about Miami, you know, Rico is this everywhere now. And I think people of tech, you know, wanted to take opportunity of, of coming to Miami at this time question on that i feel like winwood is really starting to yes get a lot of the tech at the center as well yeah especially with yes. their new rentals yes out. it's that off, it's that off more, more towards uh winwood and i see companies moving into brickle that's what i'm what i'm seeing you're right in that winwood is is an area that that is you know becoming becoming a little bit Very quickly. Yeah. yeah yeah definitely Okay, great. Um, so the last question I have is it's more so around you know, the, uh, back to the advice, you know, the hole in the wall advice that you'd give to newcomers that either want to set up a business here or move their current business here. Um, so Kat, I'd love to hear from you on, you know, like where and how to meet investors, obviously a lot of events, but if there's any tips on that. Yeah, uh, so I would say Yes, there are, there are definitely events. Um, a lot of the events that are, you know, bigger 200 people having drinks, I don't know that that's necessarily your fastest path to meeting investors. Now, if you go to something like that with somebody who knows who to introduce you to, um, that's a different situation. It can be a great way to just get FaceTime with someone where, you know, a friend is like, oh, I didn't mean to connect to so-and-so, like, great, well, right here. Um, if you're going in cold, you know, from an investment perspective, if I'm not at one of the Wednesday happy hours, maybe I talk to a founder and there's something interesting, but I would say that's more of the exception. Um, a lot of it is using your network and saying, okay, who knows one person in the space? And then I can go grab coffee with somebody else. And then from there, they introduce me to two more people to go grab coffee with. And so, you know, there's events, I would say, the Lab Miami actually does have a lot of good events around that. The WeWork, I haven't seen do too much. Like, I've spent some time at a WeWork, and there's always signs about events, but then there's like two people there. Um, so I haven't seen a ton there. But the Lab was Miami's first working space. So I think that one's really good in terms of the events that they actually put on. Um, and yeah, I would say try and go through your personal network as much as you can um, to get those first intros and then it very quickly balloons from there. You know, if you're coming in cold, then there are definitely resources. Um, Winwood really is, I think becoming more of the startup tech hub. Uh, people are joking that it will be the new Silicon Road and that's where a lot of the tech events are held. Um, so that'd be my recommendation. Great, fantastic. Thanks for sharing that. Nicole, um, what do you think about, you know, from a business perspective, finding candidates? Um, what, what's, what's your approach been? So first I would say that in this remote world, new, new remote for, uh, first world now, as most people have at least been remote for a little bit or have tried and weren't perhaps before with COVID is to keep in mind that to move your company, you don't technically actually have to move the entire team. And so for example, I moved down to Miami, but my team is global and we work with hundreds of companies that provide desk pass as a benefit to their employees so that they have access to workspaces near their home or when they travel. So what I meet you know, a lot of people go, I really can't stand where I live, but my team is here. You know, we meet uh, quarterly and you know, I don't know what that would be. It doesn't have to be a whole company thing. You can move to another uh, city and use it solution like that fast or go to a local boarding place where you can have your team meet. I mean, Airbnb just went completely remote and they're being very intentional about having recurring company meetups now. So 
companies are saving money by getting rid of their offices and then using a portion of that money to just bring the team together in different cities. Um, so one I would say is if you are wanting to move to Miami, if you have other restrictions or your teammates, like don't let that hold you back, you can move. And then everybody wants to come down to Miami. So you live in a place where people are like, I'd like to have the company meeting there. I have to like, <laughs> my team always wants to come down here as well. So I just want to put that in people's minds and say like, it's not like before where you're moving, you're like relocating people. So I think that's one thing in terms of hiring and recruiting. I mean, it's important to be very inclusive and know the market here in Miami. You have a large Latin population, a lot of people who English is not their primary language and making sure that your everything from your job descriptions to your company culture is inclusive to people who um, do not have English as their first language or um, as their culture even. So just being very mindful of that and always wanting to search local and um, things like that. So I, I would start with knowing your environment and, and being aware of that. Yeah, no, that's great advice. I think the talent pool here is, is really unique and it's been interesting mm -hmm. to know people um, in, in the area, so awesome. And then my my two bit of advice um, would be on the moving side. You know, peak season is approaching, so everyone moves during the summer when the kids are out of school. Um, so if you are considering a move and have preferred dates, get your move booked ASAP because it's just a matter of time before the industry starts saying there's blackout dates for certain times in June and July and all that. Um, so ASAP, you lock in those dates. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, and you didn't know that was a good thing. I thought this season was when it was cooler. So that's helpful. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, does anyone have any questions? So that, that concludes the panel. We're going to go to, to breakout rooms here shortly, but any questions, feel free to, to drop them in the chat here. Daniela, I also wanted to add that to network here in Miami, there are some associations that can be can be very, very helpful. Like let's say here in Brico, we have a Brico homeowners association to which uh, most of the buildings are are a part of. And those associations have a mailing list to the most of the residents in the area. Also you can you can you can take advantage of that. And also Miami is in the center of so many events we have people from all over the world coming. One of the best events here in Miami is uh, the Gold Show. The Gold Show in Miami brings a lot of people, um, entrepreneurs, of, of all kinds of entrepreneurs, and also the Art Basel uh, and over It's a great, great event. And there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of investors. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Those two events are, are absolutely incredible. I was so impressed. It's important to network around those events because you will get to know a lot of other people. 100%. Well, I do have one question that just came in from Johnny. Thank you so much. Um, events to meet other co founders in Miami. You want to take that one? So there is um, there's an app called super momos i'm just going to type it in because it's easier and they have started hosting a weekly thursday night event for founders uh i would say there's i don't know maybe 30 to 50 percent of the same people each week and then you have new people that rotate in and out the thing that i have liked about that one is that it's a smaller gathering as you actually get some quality time to get to know the people that are there um they've been hosting it at the same spot in brickle i think it's been brickle a million times at this point um but I would recommend downloading the app and then you do a quick application. Um, yeah, and then from there you can attend the events. That's amazing. I didn't even know about that one. Good to know. Um, I've met so many co-founders at the Miami Tech Happy Hour. I mean, it's amazing. Every time I walk away with X number of connections, it's, it blows my mind. Um, also, I love that we're getting back to like in real life um, office hours and getting set up with people um, there as well. I know Upstream is, is taking the leap with that, so I highly recommend the, the office hours connections as well. And then just searching Miami Tech in Eventbrite. I mean, it sounds so silly, but yeah, there's some good stuff on there. The, the Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce also offers a lot of events that could be very interesting uh, to all the tech community. Very, very good.
yeah, I agree. The appropriate events. Awesome. And a question from David here. Do you recommend any resources for people once they move? Well, funny you should ask. That's actually one of the uh, parting gifts that we're going to be sharing here. So we've been crowdsourcing a Miami Notion page um, with some of the top spots, anything from co-working to cafes to babysitters um, by neighborhood. So we're going to be sharing that here shortly. So that's one resource. I'm not sure if anyone has anything to add. <laughs>